proposal in the 2020 finance bill to have a government in quote manage unclaimed dividends which at this point is inching towards 200 billion naira that naturally got a lot of reactions from nigerians so this morning we're taking a closer look at that proposal because on one hand the government is saying well clearly there's a need to get revenue get funds from anywhere we can get it as far as is in the confines of the law so there's there's a law angle and that's also another angle we're looking at it the exigency angle which is the fact that there's a need for that so how do we go about this well two gentlemen join us this morning Mr. somebody who is the president institute of chartered secretaries and administrators of nigeria he joins us from our lego studio as well as mr gt ogunye who is a legal practitioner also joining us from our lego studios good morning gentlemen good morning. thank good you for joining us on the program yes. yeah. good well, morning viewers Great to have you. Mr. Ayeko, let me begin with you. Uh, on one hand, I know that a lot of people have reacted to this, but let me get your reactions. I mean, the legality, the exigency angle. What do you think of this proposal? Uh, very simple. Uh, the proposal is very strange. Uh, it is an infringement of the rights of shareholders. Uh, if you look at uh, uh, Principle 23 of the Nigerian Code of Corporate Governance 2018, it states clearly that their particular provision is all about the protection of the rights of shareholders. And the only reason why shareholders buy shares in any company uh, is basically to end dividend. So if a third party is now trying to expropriate what belongs to shareholders, uh, that definitely is contrary to the rights of shareholders. Uh, apart from uh, the provisions of the Code of Corporate Governance, uh, it's also contrary to the provision of the Constitution. Uh, the Constitution provides and gives every individual uh, the right to property. Uh, so when government is now saying that they will expropriate what belongs to uh, individuals, that is the shareholders, uh, that is contrary to the rights of uh, every shareholder in Nigeria, which is guaranteed by the Constitution. And that is why it is of concern to us at the Institute of Charter Secretaries and Administrators of Nigeria. Okay, well, Mr. Ogwe, there's a legal angle to this. So the federal government is going through this or going about this through a law, the finance bill, basically saying that, well, if there's a law back in this, what stops us? from pursuing it? Well, um, first and foremost, let me say that um, our country is uh, going through rough economic times, and everybody appreciates this. And so government is scrambling, looking for ways and means to keep hands meet, uh, resorting to perpetual borrowing uh, from far-flung places in the world, although the world is now a global village resorting to domestic borrowing, external borrowing, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, pension fund and all that. And now we have this proposal to fund the budget. Now, uh, if Nigeria were to be in a state of war, although Nigeria is in a state of war uh, with Boko Haram and all that, but if Nigeria were to be in a state of uh, pervasive war, uh, government could resort to extraordinary measures uh, in a state of emergency to do certain things. For example, uh, for a war effort, government could uh, have a requisition of uh, the citizenry. Um, uh, people could be made to give up their houses to be used for barracks, uh, vehicles to be used to convey troops and all that and all that. But that is not the situation here. So um, companies uh, have shares and people buy uh, this year in the capital market system, and this year is uh, to, you know, uh, attract dividends. There is a procedure and process for the payment of dividends. And so if dividends are unclaimed, I think that government should be supremely interested in how these dividends will be claimed, because that is the justice of the matter. Uh, there are many reasons why dividends are unclaimed. You know, uh, there could be uh, share value depreciation, and people just feel, oh, what am I going to gain from that? There could be debts, there could be uh, identification of uh, shareholders' problems, etc., etc., and all that. Government should be interested, uh, from the point of view of justice delivery, uh, to ensure that shareholders ultimately are uh, uh, giving justice. Not for government to feel that right. 
uh, if we can't identify these people, and companies may eventually be using this money, uh, why can't we take the money off those companies so that we can use the money ourselves? That's uh, expropriatory. And but, that's against the provisions. But is government saying the we're taking the money off? I mean, it sounds as though the government is saying, well, we're managing this money for the for, for the shareholders or those who haven't claimed their dividends, and eventually it will be plowed back. So is is this like government taking it? Government is taking it. Plowed back to whom? If somebody, for example, has uh, 5,000 uh, value of share, uh, 10,000, and you know we have the agglomeration of it in totality. This money now amounts to one, uh, up to is, is, is hitting two hundred billion. And so uh, government takes this money. Uh, the office of the Akanda General of the Federation and all the other brokers will now manage this money in the so-called trust fund to use this money to fund government needs and all that. So if eventually those solitary shareholders want to take this money back, do you? Imagine, can you imagine the red tape and the bureaucratic uh, stone wall that will be constructed against these individuals? You know, who will have to travel to Abuja, you know, for example, to go and access these 5,000, 10,000 worth of shares? My take is that the regime that's in place could be built on, and that regime is, you know, using uh, multiple resources, uh, the ICT resource. Uh, to identify shareholders and then ensure that ultimately they get these uh, resources. They, 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 look, they, they are records. There may be a number of reasons why people have not come up to take uh, their shares. There are speculations that, you know, during the first era of the indigenization uh, decree, 1972, 1977, there were people who were being divested, foreigners, who are using cooks, gardeners as their as shareholders, just to ensure that they comply uh, with the law. And that thereafter, they are also doing the privatization exercise. A lot of people who are also doing that. If that was truly the case, government could approach that from the angle or mechanism of enforcing the law. Meaning that if those steps were actually taken, that would mean that there was an infraction somewhere, that you had an illicit process. So you could identify those via the investigation. And your justice delivery system could then target those specific shares and then approach the court and say, forfeit these shares to the federal government. In a normal way that you will enforce uh, uh, economic and financial crimes. But to then say, this category of shares, they are not being, these dividends are not being claimed. So we're going to use it uh, because we have an exigency or an emergency. It doesn't make uh, good economic sense to me, and it doesn't make good justice sense to me. I'm not an economist, I'm a lawyer, that's obvious. But I'm saying that it doesn't meet the justice of the matter. You have to you, look, look, generally, and I anchor. We, 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 we. Because we don't treat the living very well in this country, sometimes we think that the dead or the presumed dead do not deserve justice. Mm. The some of these people who bought shares in their names were late mm. and therefore cannot present themselves to claim dividends. I'll give you another example. Even the banking system, people die, they have, you know, a little amount in their account, 100,000, could be salary account, uh, 200,000, and they didn't plan to die. They didn't know that they were going to die. And when they want to assess that money from the banks, they are then told to go and obtain a letter of administration. We, we, to obtain a letter of administration in Lagos, for example, the cost may exceed, well exceed the amount. And people then abandon those accounts. Which, which also leads me to the issue of dormant accounts. Um, um, because... Uh, that's also, it's like in the mix, unclaimed dividends as well as dormant accounts. Mr. Ayuku, mm. as of 2013, the value of dormant accounts was put in the region of 1 trillion naira. Mm. And um, our 2018 report says it had increased by 28%. 
and they are still there. What should happen? Because right now, it would seem like the, the dormant accounts, as, as you heard Mr. Mr. Obuye said, some of them, some of the account owners are late, some can never be claimed again. What should happen? I mean, what, would you then fault government's position if these things you know, remain unclaimed and unused? Let, let, let's go back to the unclaimed dividend because that is the focus of the finance bill. Before I answer that to the banks, uh, the, what makes it absolutely unfair uh, in terms of uh, the intention of the government regarding the expropriation, the planned expropriation of unclaimed dividend is that this particular profit we are talking about, the government has collected 30% as corporate tax. In addition to that, they've collected 2% as education tax. In addition to that, also, they've collected 10% withholding tax on this profit. So, in total, government has collected 42% of the profit that is available for declaration as, as dividend. Now, government is saying the remaining 58% are we also should have interest in it. And the question is this, do they have any investment in these shares? No. From what they do not have any investment, they've collected 42%. That is unfair. Yes, we know we have problems with unclaimed dividend in Nigeria. Why we are surprised as an institute is that you, if you go through the provision of the Finance Bill 2020, there is no mention of any attempt or any plan by the government on how to address the problem. And the expectation is that when there is a problem, you look for a solution. Uh, for example, you, won't, you do not expect a father of a, a child that has been diagnosed to be having a yellow fever to be looking for great diggers. What they should be looking for is the solution. What are the reasons why people are not claiming their dividends? And there is this wrong impression uh, out there that the unclaimed dividends are abandoned funds or they are ownerless. That is not true. The majority of those who have interest in this unclaimed dividend are alive, or those who are dead, their dependents are alive. But the system is so chaotic, so exploitative, unfair, and it is it, it, being handled in such a way that People are just frustrated. For example, uh, Mr. Gunye mentioned something about the probate. And you can do a research. Visit any of the probate registry in any state of the federation. You will discover that no less than 60% of the applications we have there, they also uh, include shares of deceased. So if you aggregate all the uh, applications for uh, letters of administration probate, in all the probate registries in Nigeria, you will discover that substantial number of those applications are to enable them have access to the unclaimed dividends of these people. But if you go there, it's so bureaucratic in the sense that they ask, for example, you know, if, since you need to probably, uh, process the application once, it will include the shares, it will include the property. Now, almost all the states, what they adopt is that you have to pay, whoever is processing, we need to pay 10% of the value of the assets to the government. For example, you talk about the uh, value of a uh, property that is inclu included. Here uh, is a shareholder who has died suddenly, who did not expect that he would die. And then you are asking the dependents, even for them to continue to use the house that uh, the, the dependent left uh, behind, uh, the deceased left uh, behind, that they need to pay 10% uh, to the government. They cannot afford it. And in the process, the government now comes up with very arbitrary valuation uh, uh, procedure, in which case they look at the property and they say it's worth one million euro. The question is this, are the dependents selling this property? They are not selling it, it's just a change of name, but the government has made it so complex. And when, they, if, if you look at some states, they also have uh, maybe assumed value of property in certain locations. Now, the question is this, if you ask the government to pay for this particular uh, assumed valuation, would they be able to pay? And in the process, there is compromise, there is corruption in the system, and because of that, a lot of people will abandon their claim. This dating. will seem a lot like, uh, Mr. Ayuko, that there is a lot of um, um, legal... Uh, jungles, so to speak, for people to navigate. So, Mr. Okuye, what are the options for the people who are concerned, directly concerned with these unclaimed dividends and dominant accounts? Well, first, uh, my co-panelist, you know, he's spoken elaborately and very intelligently about this top topic, and he's very knowledgeable about some of the problems that we face on the legal front. There will be the need to have reforms. Uh, to ease the process of succession in certain aspects. Because succession problem is part of the problem that we're dealing with. Uh, your parents have uh, shares. You can't access the shares. 
unless you get the letter of administration or there is a will that has been admitted to probate, and that process is cumbersome. Uh, that process is not easy at all. Mm -hmm. And so, the certain time people just feel that, uh, yes, our parents that had this year's. What was even the value of this year's anyway? So, and so looking at years, okay. just, just, you will just need a moment. reforms. Just, just to, yes, you're talking about those reforms. Would you say, because some from listening to you right now, some would imagine maybe it was deliberate or was there a reason that that bureaucracy was created to make it difficult so that it doesn't go into the wrong hands? No, no, I wouldn't say that it's deliberate. Law can become a cake. Law can become uh, difficult to implement. It is the responsibility of legislators and those in the executive branch of government and the citizens at large to reinvent laws. That's why we talked about legal reforms. That's why we have a statutory body called Law Reform Commission. Okay? So, if these processes are this cumbersome and they're causing pain to people, it is a bounding duty of the society to look at it and say that, what are we going to do about this? For example, as given the instance of people excuse me, leaving the accounts of their spouses or their parents in the banks. 100,000, 200,000. Well, well, they said that this problem is even more than the value of the money. So they leave it there. And so the agglomeration approximates the one trillion or whatever that you are talking about just now. So you need that reform. And at the level of uh, the government, sticking to the issue of unclaimed dividends, um, the companies whose shares were purchased by shareholders in the first instance, um, who are opposed to this, uh, the institutions, uh, capital market operators and all that, they also have a responsibility to discharge here. And that responsibility is to come together, synergize, mm -hmm. and help resolve this problem. Uh, it's not enough to say that we have such instances elsewhere. In England, we have over 3 billion pounds. So in Australia, we have over 1 billion Australian dollars, and so on and so forth. So the situation must be the same in Nigeria. No. And I think that steps from the reports that we have are being taken in this direction. Okay. Government Mr. has a role, therefore, Pardon. to help them achieve that objective rather than clamping down and then see. So eventually they need to work together. Yeah. But this is what we'll do. We'll go on a quick break. And when we return, we'll take your closing thoughts on this, especially what's happening to those dividends now that they remain unclaimed. Please stay with us. Welcome back. Unclaimed dividends, dormant accounts. What should be done to them or with them in this case? But just to mention that we did reach out to the Securities and Exchange Commission, the head of communications, uh, to wade in on this matter. And we're still expecting uh, a response. But let me go back to uh, Mr. Yeku, the President, Institute of Chartered Secretaries and Administrators of Nigeria. So the question now is, those dividends remain unclaimed. Those accounts remain dormant. What is, what is happening to them or what has been happening to them uh, all this while that it remain dormant or unclaimed? That's a big question a lot of people are asking also. The, the, the current practice is very simple and it's working. And what happens is that when a company declares dividend, after 15 months, if they still remain unclaimed, those money, 90% of the money will be returned by the registrars to the companies uh, to hold why the registrar will use the remaining 10% to service uh, the ones that are being uh, claimed from time to time. Now, after 12 years, uh, those uh, uh, unclaimed dividends will then be written back to the books of the company and to be plowed back into the operations of the business so as to expand the business and then to generate uh, further profit, which will be distributed. And the companies have been working with the Security and Exchange Commission, uh, the registrars, to identify those people who own this unclaimed dividend to ensure that they get this unclaimed dividend. And uh, we have also been sensitized, for example, the Institute, uh, we've been sensitizing the government on the need for us to actually work for the government to work with the various probate registry. That is the major bottleneck we have in this country. If they are able to simplify the process in such a way that when a person dies, you are not asking the person to bring 10% of the net worth of uh, the, the deceased, it will be easier for them to assess, uh, the, uh, get the letter of, uh, letters of administration or the probate, and then they will be able to claim this dividend. We've recommended to SEC, 
and also to the authorities. Let them simplify the process of claiming or claiming the, uh, the dividends. As at now, what happens is that if you uh, have unclaimed dividends in five companies, you need to fill five different forms. And we have said no. Just allow the shareholders to fill one form, list out all the companies where they have this uh, unclaimed dividend, and then the registrars of this company will process and then will pay. And there must be a time frame within which this should be done. It's not something that should be uh, you, you should just be hanging indefinitely. In addition to that, we also identify another segment of people who fall within this category. You know, during the banking consolidation, a lot of people bought shares. Most of those companies, yeah, for example, most of those banks, uh, around uh, 2011, you recall we have about 100 banks. Today, we have about 20-something banks. Most of those banks, they have disappeared. And the shareholders assume that, okay, those banks have disappeared. We do not have unclaimed dividend yet. What the government needs to do is to do something like a corporate map, uh, mapping, whereby the remaining 20-something banks that are still in existence, let us know the banks they have acquired, so that the shareholder will say, okay, yes, I bought shares in 2012. That company, that bank is no longer in existence. It has been liquidated. That bank has now been absorbed by Soso Bank, so that they know the banks to, to follow up this with, and then they will be in a position to uh, claim this dividend. Apart from that, going forward, because we are just looking at the immediate problem that we are having uh, about uh, 200 billion. That, 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 that is nothing. The major problem is how do we manage this proactively? The best way to do that, we, which the institute has suggested to the government, is that in the application, the share applications forms we are designing going forward, there should be a provision for a default beneficiary are to be provided by the applicant, the shareholder, so that he says that in case of death or whatever, if I have a, a problem with my account, my dividend should be paid automatically to a beneficiary, a name beneficiary, something, something close to like a we. Yeah. So that if the person dies, there is no need for a probate. The very, money very will be quick, paid automatically. Yeah, very quick one, Mr. Yuku. Uh, you heard Mr. Ogunye say that the other time that we need to dust up the laws that govern these uh, sectors segment of our life that you're talking about. Has there been any proposition to the National Assembly about this to ensure that at least to make this proposition that this should be done so that things can be tied up better? We, 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 we have been doing that because we have identified this issue of probate and letters of administration as a major problem. And what we has have, been the response? We have not seen any response that is tangible because I have not seen anything as that now. And that is why we are concerned. Now, regarding the current issue we are having, the major problem we need to focus on is the effect on the capital market. If there is a mistake to allow this Finance B 2020 to be passed with this proposal to expropriate on claim dividend, a lot of, a lot of listed companies will delist. Mm. Because the question is this. If you look at the recent trend, when the big companies, when they delist, they will not delist and fall back to public companies. They go straight to private companies. In such a way, and immediately that happens, they remove their registrars. Okay. So there will be lots of jobs. Apart from that, you know, in the ecosystem, the capital market ecosystem, there are a lot of stakeholders, including the government. For example, whenever there is a trading on the shares of any listed company in Nigeria, the government gets VAT, the government gets stamp duty, the stockbroker... So, so, so many issues, Mr. Ayuku, because, I mean, you're talking about the finance bill now, then there's still karma still coming up and all of that, but then, uh, because, but we really, really have to close out in, in a bit. Uh, Mr. Ogunye, what's the legal solution for any human any individual or corporate organization caught in this web? Well, uh, w what I think should be done is what I had proposed earlier, and that proposal has been there. The uh, stakeholders, including the government, must work together mm. to ensure that there is a solution to this problem. Um, look, it can be argued, for example, that from the angle of the companies that sell these shares to people who own these unclaimed uh, uh, shares, that if there's a realization that ultimately after 12 years, the money will be plowed back to the company hmm. for the company to be using, that that itself is a incentive okay. for such company to be proactive okay. in ensuring that these dividends are paid as a when due. Okay. I'm saying, I'm suggesting that all the stakeholders need to come together hmm. to find a solution okay. to the problem. All right. Well, Mr. Jitsi Ogunye, Mr. Bode Ayeko, thank you so much for sharing your thoughts with us on this issue. Uh, we appreciate it. Well, it's definitely not going away anytime soon. We'll keep our eyes there. But then just two quick messages before we go. Uh, George Akpambo says about budgeting, I wonder why we come out with different figures every year in terms of budget, but nothing whatsoever changes in the lives of ordinary citizens. In the essence of yearly budgets is to improve the quality of lives for the citizens and not for lip services. 
I wonder how we will fund this 2021 budget because it is very clear that that country is broke. Well, that question was for you as part of the economic <laughs> handlers. <laughs> but this final one, uh, agriculture remains our hope of economic development. It talks about 10% of our population supporting and investing in farming. Professor Inakina, uh, thanks for that tweet. Well, maybe Professor Inakina should have mentioned your name and <laughs> ask, where's your farm? No way. <laughs> Uh, well, that's our program today. Thank you so much for watching and have a wonderful day and please keep safe. I'm Ayo Makile. And I'm Kairo Kikyolu. Have a great day.